Hi, it's Dwyer. It is June the 29th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Always 1776.com, a free site. Financial blog I run. Let's talk investments. In fact, investment's a strong word. Let's talk speculations. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this video should not be interpreted as investment advice. Rather, it's just interpreted as sharing, right? As speculating about possible profit-making opportunities before most of the public. Well, right now, few things are taking off more than self-driving cars, right? They're exploding. Amazon is now in the mix. They recently picked up a self-driving car company. You know, Tesla has autopilot. That is supposed to be keeping track of all of the self-driving miles that Tesla does and sending it back to a server that is supposed to be improving the software over time. You can imagine that self-driving car technology is a blockbuster. That if you're going to get a Tesla with autopilot, you're going to have to pay a lot of money. Also, Google's Waymo group is out there. Very expensive operation. They're trying to get to level four, right? Where you just sit in the car and the car does everything for you. You don't even have to nudge the wheel to change lanes. Right? They're using sophisticated radar type, LIDAR type technology to figure out what's around the car. Well, let me just tell you uh, a basic theory that I have on life. The technology right now, the current technology, is far beyond where you think it is. Right? The people in the know know that the capability right now is breathtaking, right? I'll tell someone, hey, you know, you can buy um, Bitcoin on Square Cash App. And they'll say to me, what's Square Cash App? And then, of course, you show them and they're astonished. They had no idea that this technology exists today. And of course, it's existed for years. People are hearing about Uphold.com. Lately, I'm hearing PayPal might actually allow you to buy crypto. Folks, the technology is already here. We just don't know fully about it. Right? Well, in the self-driving space, there's a box. It's a little bit bigger than a cell phone. In fact, the early models actually use cell phones. Things have evolved. This is actually a later model. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger than a cell phone. It's open source. In other words, what the driver sees as the car is driving itself Computers are seeing and are keeping track of in the cloud and are improving the software. Well, this box created by a company called Kama AI. Again, it's Kama AI. Has improved to the point where there's a video online. A Tesla driver with Tesla's autopilot is out driving, right? His Tesla autopilot, they have cameras in the car and stuff like that, and they're comparing it to a car driven by Kama AI. Of course. Right, folks, it's 
almost identical. The things that the Tesla autopilot can do, the common AI can do. The catch, of course, is that the common AI costs about $1,000. The catch, of course, is that for certain models of cars, typically made after 2015, the comma AI is plug and play. In other words, you get it, you put it right under your rear view window on the windshield, you just stick it there in the car, uh, the car harness, if you're driving one of the approved cars, let's say a Toyota RAV4 or something like that from the appropriate year, you can literally just take the cord, stick it into the little terminal, and boom, your car is self-driving. It's level two. What that means is to change lanes, they encourage you to touch the wheel, to you know, make sure there's no blind spot. You nudge the wheel, the car then will, on its own, change the lane. But understand, if you're on a winding road and you stay in the same lane, or you're on a highway, you can just sit there and your car will do most of the work. There's several videos of people using comma AI technology here online. But the one with the Tesla is really striking. Because they go to an area where there's a road and there's grass on the side. The road's not properly marked. Because Kama AI is open source and because drivers have been in that situation in the past and because that data has been upload it to the computer, which is constantly improving the software. Believe it or not, the comma AI outperforms the Tesla under those conditions. Now it's June of 2020, when you have machine learning like this, when it's open source, as people in the crypto community know, when it's open source and it's constantly being improved, I can't even imagine where comma AI is going to be 12 months from now. Right now we're talking about a private company. I don't own any comma AI yet. I'm someone who likes to wait until these companies go public. Right? Just to understand the capability. For $1,000, if you're driving one of the more than 60 models of cars listed on the Kama AI site. And if that car is relatively new, right, has certain things, cameras and stuff like that already installed in the car that they don't advertise, right, has certain assisted power steering and things like that, that are commonplace in modern cars then for $1,000, you can buy a device, and it looks good, right? It would look great on a date, as you can imagine. Your date hops in the car, she says, what's that? You say, oh, you know, that's my open pilot. It's going to be helping me drive. You're on the highway. You can turn to her and look at her, right? Understand, the system's so advanced that when your eyes are not fully on the road, it beeps. It basically tells you, player, what are you doing? You need to be more attentive here. Right? They want you to look on the road as your car drives itself. So that if something strange happens, right, the car in front of you stops suddenly or something odd happens, you're awake, you're aware, you're able to make the adjustment. Right, folks, the technology is here now and it's cheap. If you don't realize that in five years, most cars, or at least a huge percentage of cars, are going to be self-driving, 
then you've been living in a cave. The technology is here, it's cheap, it's efficient, and it's improving. The company's name is Kama AI. I'm keeping an eye on it. I just want for them to go public. I don't want to fool around with, you know, Equity Zen and these companies that let you buy pre-IPO. Just let it go public. I'll buy shares. I want the liquidity. Kaba AI. It's here now. I have an eye on it. Another company I have an eye on is NIO. N-I-O. They're an electric vehicle maker out of China. They recently got access to about a billion dollars. The company has very promising technology, very promising technology in a country that quite frankly has had a pollution problem in some of its big cities. Understand, when you say Chinese big city, you're talking about a city that is much bigger than New York City, the biggest city in the United States, right? Much bigger. What I want you to do is to just Google and look up the stats for cities like Shenzhen, right? Beijing, you're gonna be astonished. They have millions more people than New York City. So, of course, the government has made it a priority to reduce the pollution. Electric vehicles are viewed fondly, right? China even opened its doors to Elon Musk and Tesla coming in and building a factory. Well, here you have a homegrown Chinese company, and they're publicly traded today. Now, a share of Tesla is going to set you back several hundred dollars, right? More than $900. With NEO, the cost per share is less than $10. Right now, their research lab is working on level four autonomous driving, right? This is where you're not even required to nudge the wheel. The car is doing all the work. Right now, that's some time away, but understand they're working on it now. They have electric cars. They run now. They look good. Again, less than $10 a share. Right? I own some shares of NEO. This is a position I hope to build in the future. Again, don't consider this investment advice. I'm just telling you an idea that I'm pursuing. I'm just sharing what I'm doing. Finally, let's talk about perhaps the biggest speculation of them all. You know, I'm a fan of sound money. From time to time, I'm talking with friends and they say, hey, what are you doing? You need to come up with three or four names that you could just throw out there. So I always say Bitcoin, gold, dash, and silver. Right? Bitcoin, gold, dash, and silver. What do I mean when I say sound money? I mean limited supply money. The kind that they can't just print. Right? The government can't announce a bailout and suddenly start printing gold. It's not the way gold operates. They can print dollars, right? Dollars that are tethered to nothing, fiat currency. They could print that. That's suspect to me. They can't print Bitcoin. They can't print gold. They can't print Dash. They can't print silver. Well, what if I told you that there is a vast land. It's vast. Has some great real estate that people are buying hand over fist. They've just allowed outsiders to purchase land. Before you had to be an insider. Now an outsider can show up and start purchasing land, can start building Things like nightclubs and stuff like that. The people are coming 
you have a whole community of folks looking for a place like this. Now, the fact that the place is online, it's on the blockchain, it's virtual. The fact that the place is called Decentraland shouldn't dissuade anyone from realizing that this is a destination where many people want to be, right? These days we're increasingly indoors because of viruses, because of riots, right? Because of increasing technology, right? Zoom, Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Meet. Uh, you can now, from home, right? Get together with friends, many of them. We know that the virtual world is such that you even have online casinos right now, allow allowing betting on esports, <laughs> right? You understand that Activision and stocks like that have taken off. That if you give, give your kid a Sony PlayStation, that kid's going to hug you. Well, understand, Decentraland is on the blockchain. It's not owned by some corporate entity like Sony. Right? This is the updated, decentralized version of Second Life. You remember that game from many years ago? The catch with Decentraland. Did I say catch? I really meant to say opportunity. Is that Decentraland is based on and uses sound money. Limited supply money. The supply cannot be tampered with. And investors like me can actually buy this money used in Decentraland. So as the value of the money goes up, as Decentraland takes off and more people need this currency to do things in Decentraland, right? Buy a drink at the club, build a house, build a business, lease someplace, right? You have a full-blown economy on Decentraland. Right? It's on the basement level right now, but it's being built up. The cryptocurrency, which is the exclusive currency used in Decentraland, is called MANA. M-A-N-A. -A. And folks, it's limited supply. And it's on several cryptocurrency exchanges. So you don't even have to build on Decentraland to get part of the capital gains. Because it's limited supply and because it's in demand, because people want mana to be able to spend and use in Decentraland, I believe you're going to have huge upside. I believe the value of the limited supply currency is going to increase dramatically. Mana right now is dirt cheap. That's how I like it, right? I'm buying mana right now on some exchanges, hoping that Decentraland continues to increase in popularity, that people continue to look for online worlds and that they realize that Decentraland is unique because it's decentralized and it's built on the blockchain. I like MANA right now. I think it's worth a look. For me, you'll need to make your own decisions. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.